In this last installment of Mesh Mixer Tips, I'm going to go through five creative ways you can use Mesh Mixer. Now, I normally use Mesh Mixer to repair and fix STL files for 3D printing, but as its name suggests, it's actually designed for more creative aspects of mesh editing. So let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makey's Muse. Now, if you have not seen my previous two videos on Mesh Mixer tips, go watch them. Um, I talk about all the tools that I use on a daily basis when working with meshes. But in today's video, I'm gonna go through some artistic uses of the software that a lot of my friends use to do really, really cool things. I'm not much of an artist at all, but I wanna go through them in this video so you know what they do and you can add them to your tool belt when it comes to editing meshes. Now, as you can probably imagine, Mesh Mixer gets its name from something and that is from mesh mixing. Um, its original design was to create crazy, freaky objects and shapes by just mashing different meshes together. And it's still at its core what mesh mixer does really, really well. So to demonstrate that, we have mesh mix here on the left hand side. And it's actually been expanded massively. Now Autodesk has taken over with what's built into the, the uh, I guess the repository of, of meshes you have access to. But let's go with um, some creepy stuff. Let's go with arms. So we've got these arms and things. This is great for kids, by the way. Um, so let's add some, let's add some hands to our rabbit, shall we? Let's just uh, drop it in there. Um, let's, you know, let's just make it maybe here. Um, let's change the sizing to make it bigger. Maybe make it twice the size. So we've got a hand there. You know, there we go. You can actually change it there on the, the, the uh, little icon. Uh, move it around. There we go. <laughs> and you can move it into different locations. And then accept. And Mesh Mixer stitches it perfectly to our existing mesh. Uh, so we've got a hand outside of it. Let's, uh, let's do something even weirder. Let's do... Do we have any wings? We've got ears. Uh, miscellaneous. That's just strange. Um, we can give it horns. Let's give it some horns. Uh, okay, so let's give our bunny some some horns shall we there we go um let's make it a little bit larger so we've got a horn there yeah, it's almost like a tusk actually it's like a tusk tusk of a elephant or something and then add another one in and you can see how you can just do some really crazy creepy things with mesh mixing um you even have access to Tinkerplay parts. So Tinkerplay was an app in its own right, and then it kind of got merged into Tinkercad and now Mesh Mixer. But these are like joiners that you have access to. So if you want to turn something into an easy to join together figurine, for example, you can grab these components and drop them in. And um, you don't want to scale them because then you'll affect the joinability of them, if that's even a word. But yeah, you can just drop a component in like that. Um, yeah, I guess wherever you want it, want it to be. Um, <laughs> Probably not like that, but there it is. And accept. Now that isn't actually joined to our bunny, it's separate. If I just go back there, uh, we want to uh, do a Boolean union, which will merge it to our rabbit like that, which will be good, accept. And there you go. So that's mesh mixing. Um, quite a lot of fun and you can see how kids can get into it, but there's also another tool that kids absolutely love and that is the sculpting tool. It's actually a whole suite of tools under the sculpting uh, sculpting tool set under here on the left hand side. So you have different types of brushes and this is, if everyone, everyone's worked with like, like hands-on sculpting in, in Blender or, or something like ZBrush, that's very much what this is like. It's free though, so it's not gonna be as powerful as ZBrush, but you can still do some really cool things in it. For example, drag, I quite like drag. Uh, so with drag, we can change the strength and the size of our brush, and then we can just grab something and change its size and drag it out and do all sorts of things like that. Um, and um, mess with the things. And you can also change refinement. So. Currently it's on default, it's adding triangles in, but if we want to turn refinement here, turn it off, then it won't add triangles, it will just stretch and contort, which may be what you want, it may not be what you want. Um, we can you know, even tweak the whole overall shape like that. You know, maybe our horns, uh, tusks aren't where we want them, we can move them around. You can move a hand even. Oh, that's so weird. That is, that is horrible. Uh, we also have pinch which is quite nice for like making things sharper and pointy you know there we go you can make that pointy 
Okay, these little tips here are a bit, bit sharper. Um, and then we have inflate as well, like for example, these uh, tusks are maybe a bit too sharp and now they've got some blunted ends. We can make these fingers as well. Similarly, we can make them... Ugh. Oh my god. <laughs> Horrible. Absolutely horrifying. And then you can even draw. So if you're really skilled, you can actually draw. So let's grab the... Uh, which one do we want? Just the standard draw. And then make our size much smaller. Here, make sure refinement's on for this because we need to add more triangles in. But we can, you know, change the size down and we can actually draw stuff onto the surface of our shape. You know, it's it's. If if you want to do this kind of thing, if this, you know, if this interests you, then go to town. I mean, it is, it is quite a lot of fun to do this. And you can really add detail into existing meshes that weren't already there. Now again, I am not skilled at all at doing this kind of thing, but you can do it. Um, and it's all here in the free Mesh Mixer Suite. Alright, so I've done some absolutely horrific things to our rabbit here. Um, but now we're going to do some even stranger things with the Make Pattern Tool. I have used the Make Pattern Tool before for practical applications, and I'll demonstrate how that Make Pattern is basically a good way to do something really interesting uh, and very complicated using the outline of an existing STL file. So I think we tortured that bunny enough. Let's get a, uh, a new bunny in here. And I'm going to add a base to it. So Inspector Auto Repair, like I showed in the first video a ser episode of this series, done. And I'm going to change its size as well. So units, let's make its height, uh, let's make it 150 millimeters high. Okay. So make pattern works like this. We go to edit, make pattern, and there's a few different patterns you can employ. It can be used to make really cool objects, and I'll demonstrate how. Um, this is the default, it's tiled tubes. I never use this. I don't know why you'd want to do this, but to demonstrate what it does, uh, let's space these out a bit more like that. So there's just holes like that. Um, and we're going to subtract these from the object. So that's the default there. And we are going to clip it to the surface. That's fine. Update. And this is the result of using the tile tubes pattern. Uh, we get a bunny that's riddled with holes. I apologize if you have tryptophobia. I've probably just set it off big time. That is awful. Let's do something else. Let's do my favorite lattice. I love lattice. It looks really cool. Uh, you can actually rotate the orientation of these patterns. So with the lattice, I'm actually going to change the spacing to be quite a fair bit further apart. Uh, maybe like that. And change the element size to 3. Like that. And I'm going to rotate it to be 45 degrees. So rotate here, um, 45, and then hit uh, world view, uh, sorry, world orientation, and then rotate that by 45 here. So now we have them, as you might be familiar, with my lattice torture cube. And this is where I got the original idea for the torture lattice test by using this tool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to select intersect, not subtract and we're going to do update. Now what this will do is just leave the lattice in the shape of the bunny rather than taking away the lattice shape from the bunny and leaving a lattice void. We're going to leave left with a lattice shape bunny. A lattice, a bunny shaped lattice. You'll see. And here we go. Here's our bunny shaped lattice. Uh, it's absolutely crazy. It looks really neat. Now this does not take into account any form of printability. So if I accept this, which I will here, we're left with this make solid lattice. And as you can see straight off the bat, I mean, there's a bit floating there in space. Um, there's just one part joining here. Um, so if we were to print this on an FDM 3D printer, it's going to fail pretty badly. I mean, there's you're going to need support on and then it's just going to fill the whole thing with supports. But if you were to remove those little hang overhang bits and do a little bit of modification, this will be fully printable on an SLS 3D printer like the the Center at Lisa, which uh, you know they have done models like this before to demonstrate their technology, and it just looks really cool. <laughs> I really like the lattice look. Um, but I do have another video here on how I, you can make a skin around the lattice, and then therefore it is printable and you can print without supports. I did a huge maker coin with this 3D lattice infill. It looks really really cool. And it is very much a useful way of adding a strong infill for SLS processes or even FDM if you like. So it does have a practical application, uh, but it just looks really cool. 
There's lots of ways you can use Make Pattern, but there's one other way that is actually really, really neat, and you might actually find yourself using it for artistic 3D prints, and that is to turn the vertexes of our model into rods. But we have too many in this in this bunny. We need to simplify it. Like I showed in the previous video, we can simplify the amount of triangles. So I'm going to do that now by selecting all the model, Control A, and then Edit. I'm going to uh, re reduce, and I'm going to bring it way down with with the max deviation. Let's bring it way down to. Uh, So we've got the max deviation, and I'm going to actually increase that, because maybe you can just enter a number, to 3 millimeters. Uh, actually, let's even go higher. Let's go to 10. 10. Or more. Can we go to 20? 20. Okay, that's good. Very low polygon count. Except. Now we can get this model here, and then go to Edit, Make Pattern, and we're going to choose Edges. So what this does is take the outline of those triangles and draws a rod around them, around the edges of the triangle. And you end up with this awesome looking shape. Um, we can also choose dual edges, which is even more funky, looks like sort of some honeycomb kind of thing. Um, and then also we can choose a mesh and edges, which is even more complicated. So it's got rods inside the shape, which will give it more strength if you're going to print it with SLS or that sort of technology. And again, we can also choose a hybrid like that. But I'm just going to go with uh, the straight edges like this. I think it looks really cool. And I'll make the elements a bit thicker. Let's make them three millimeters. Uh, and spacing as well. Um, that we don't care about that. Um, and then of course we have the uh, composition mode, intersect or not. Um, and I'm going to choose intersect, not subtract, because I think that'll look really, really good. Although I've never done subtract with this actually. Let's have a look. Um, really, you would want to just do an intersect. This is what our intersect looks like with the edges and our low poly rabbit. I'll accept that. And that just looks super cool. So if there's anything in this video that you could easily do to do cool artistic prints, it would probably be this tip. Now, uh, I don't do this very often and you will have to take into consideration the overhangs. They're pretty severe, but you can do really cool things for art, uh, art installations, lighting, anything like that, um, this is a really easy way to do it. And these files, are they're using the make solid algorithm afterwards, so they are completely manifold. And usually, if I check here, there you go, error free, so they're ready to print. So that's make pattern. Next we're going to talk about the stamp tool, a very mis misunderstood and, and, and uh, neglected tool in Mesh Mixer. So the stamp tool in Mesh Mixer isn't as useful as, as I wish it was, but you can still do some really cool things with it. I'm gonna go to stamp here and you have some defaults, right? So let's go with the star. Uh, and let's drop the star down on the bunny here. So this creates what's called a face group, which is an individually selectable area on the model. And you can just drop them wherever you want. So let's do a star there, star there, and let's do a little star there. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to select and double click one of the stars, and then we can go and modify that area very easily. So I can go and edit, and uh, I can remesh it or change it, or I can go to deform and transform, and using the normal of the triangle, pull it up like that, and do essentially a an emboss on our model, with, which is very clean, no 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 issues there with triangles. Uh, again, that's, that's uh, clear selection, and do it with this one. You know, deform, transform, and pull it up again. Um, you know, whatever amount. There you go. Clear selection. Uh, so this is what stamping is really powerful with. And it would be really nice, and I don't know if there's a way, let me know in the comments if there is, to get like an SVG and stamp that. But you can create your own stamps. It's just not as, it's just not as elegant uh, as getting an SVG and writing like a logo or text. Okay. So we need triangles to do this. So I'm going to clear my selection and just select just like a shape. So maybe just an M. M like that. You can see why having lots of triangles is useful for this. Um, holding down a control to unselect those. Okay, I'm going to smooth the boundary for this. I'm going to go to modify and smooth boundary. Uh, that is not what I wanted at all. Uh, so just a little bit of smoothness, I guess. So that's probably fine. Except this is our new group. And now we've created a face group. We can select that face group and we can go to convert to 
Stamp. Now we have a stamp we can stamp onto our object. You can see how this isn't really useful. <laughs> um, uh, so under, under stamp, it can go down to the bottom, oh actually it's at the top here. I can select it there, and I can now stamp that shape. You can see, like this. It adds in the triangles to let you do it. So you can see why I'd love to be able to just stamp an SVG or something, because I could then, you know, I could then get my logo and just stamp it really quickly onto any model. But currently, you're limited to doing it like that. I don't know if there's a better way. That's a stamping tool. Kind of useful, could be better, but worth knowing about all the same. Okay guys, it's time to talk about the last tool in our lineup, and this one is very complicated. You could even say it's quite complex. It's generating complexes. Now this is a new tool in MeshMix, it hasn't been around very long, and there's a whole write-up on their page linked in the video description on how to use it. But essentially, it's a way you can slice up an STL file for multi-color printing or multi-material printing. At least that's how a lot of people I know are using it. So to demonstrate it, I'm going to go to select here and select the ear like this. And I'm also going to smooth our boundary. So modify smooth boundary like that. That's fine, accept. And then I'm going to turn it into a, a face group, create face group like that. Okay, so we've got an ear. Let's say we want this ear to be a different color. Um, but it's going to be part of the STL file and mesh perfectly, so when we print it dual color, it will be joined and fused perfectly with not, no errors in the file. So we're going to go to edit and generate complex. And what we're going to do is tell it that we want this to be its own complex. It's letting us highlight the face groups. Double click it. Okay, we've now got our face group uh, turned into a complex. And um, yeah, let's accept that. That looks okay. Accept. Okay, we've got our bunny and our complex. And you can just keep going and going and going to create multiple complexes. For example, I can create a complex area. Uh, let's go with here. Um, that's not going to work. That's, that's, uh, let's go with a bigger... Let's go with area like this. Maybe like that. Okay. So again, modify smooth boundary. Uh, smooth this more like that. That's fine. Accept. Uh, this is going to become its own face group. And then again, um, we're going to edit our complex, so generate complex. Let's double click that one too. It creates a complex within this bunny, and then accept. So I don't, know if it's, I don't know if it's better to do it in the one operation or go back and do it again. I've now got a complex complex, whatever uh, you can see here. <laughs> but I'm just going to split them off. So split complex, and now we've got three different files, which you can see here uh, our um, bunny which is gone, and our little little sort of uh, different colored complexes here, like that. And the cool thing, if I bring the bunny back, is it's perfectly designed to not intersect our separate part, like that, see? Now, it might still generate errors. It's still very early. It, it does say in the, in the documentation for MeshMixer, it's still got a little while to go. But this is a great way to create multicolor prints or slice up STL files into multicolor prints if they weren't designed for it in, in the original 3D design software. And then you can export them, of course, in their separate, uh, separate parts, separate STL files with the same origin. Or if your slicer prefers them to be in the same STL, you can combine them again and export. But that's complexes. I don't use it very often because I don't multicolor print very often. But it's something that uh, Joe, uh, the 3D maker noob, has been playing around with. And I'll link to his video here to show how he uses it for multicolor printing. And that is going to do it, guys, for this last video, at least for the moment, on mesh mixer tools that I use for 3D printing. We've gone through 10 of the really useful, like, I guess, uh, hardcore mesh editing tools. And then we've gone through five of the more fun tools for creatively modifying and mesh mixing your STL and mesh files for 3D printing. I hope you found these videos useful, guys. And if you did, please consider subscribing. It helps out the channel a lot. I'd love to have you on board. I aim to empower your creativity with 3D printing. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Happy printing, guys. Bye.